two, one. Hello and welcome to Create Now. Today we are talking a little bit more about the home studio setup. So, two little speakers. On your speakers you got your woofer and your tweeter. Your woofer takes care of your mid-range and your tweeter takes care of all the high frequency stuff. So ideally what people like to do is have an equilateral triangle with the two tweeters pointing to the back of the head and the woofers kind of going in, in depending on how well that's what you'd do for the largest spread of panning but uh, that's like an idealistic situation but you're often just fucking around with the back of the room on your phone or whatever so uh, and there's going to be other noise so just go roughly for that and you'll be alright trying to have one higher than the other around them uh, a lot of people end up just having them pointing straight down the room because the room's so small that they're in usually you're dealing with very very not ideal situations when it comes to where these speakers go. You don't always have the, the luxury of having uh, that nice place to put your speakers and so on. So we're, we're going to talk a little about microphones. Whoa, microphones! So you got your source and how you're going to capture that. The source is like your a guitar or a human so you want to uh, catch catch them resonating so you stick a microphone near them the closer you stick the microphone to the person the more of the person you will record and the further away the more of the room you will get so generally you don't want the rooms don't sound great they sound okay ish so room sound is kind of like reverb so if you want a load of reverb on the person you would keep the microphone further away and once the sound is squashed with a compressor it's like squeezing a balloon or something you really squash it all the air is still there you're squashing it so you're squashing it right up against the person's ear it's like oh geez i can hear it but So the two main microphones are condenser, condenser, and a dynamic. I think dynamic were often like American design, and condenser were German, and seen as more expensive and highly engineered. Uh, the, conden the condensers require a power supply called phantom power, generally at 48 volts. It couldn't be 48 volts, could it? It's 48 V, so I guess that's 48 volts. There you are. They can often run on half that or less, and you can also affect the sound of the microphone to kind of. Uh, if you want it to sound a bit kind of messed up, you can like really lower the voltage, and it will kind of. It's like a guitar pedal running on a dead battery. It sounds a bit squidgy. And it's 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 a bit uh, less it's less articulate. Because there's no all the energy to respond. Uh, so typically the condenser microphone is what you would use in a situation if you had a, a studio or something. Because the condenser microphone picks up everything. As I keep going on about. Um, whereas the dynamic microphone are typically all cardioids. Unless we're getting into um, ribbon microphones. But, um, yeah. Cardioid means they only, they're directional. Okay, so dynamic microphones are lovely. They're fucking gorgeous. If you don't know what, to, they're just very forgiving. You can drop them, they'll be alright. You drop a. Oof. Yeah. 
All right, so in, in there's the main parts of the microphone is your diaphragm. Then you have two wires coming out of that. So when you talk, it moves the diaphragm forward and backwards, in and out, and depending on how fast you do that, so on, it turns into electrical signal, goes through a transformer. So the two wires go down into a transformer, and then they get put out into that XLR cable, go down the line, where they go into your sound card, which hopefully is a little volume knob, known as a mic pre, and you turn the volume home on that, and so you can hear. The, because of the electrical element added to a condenser microphone, you can turn them really high up and they're excellent for if you want something in the room. For example, right now, I'm using two condenser microphones which are highly art articulate because uh, they're powered and they pick up the full range. Typically, condensers, because they're powered and all that, they can pick up all the way down 80 hertz, 80 kilohertz, all the way. The, hu the scope of the human hearing. Um, perhaps the newborn baby. Because uh, your hearing starts dropping off fairly quick. Fair play to you if you can hear of that, that high. 60 kilohertz, jeepers. That's out above the audio hearing, hearing range. And, um, some of that subs like 20 hertz just be heard by like whales and fucking elephants you might feel it in like you might feel your tummy be like oh jeez what's jesus something my legs shaking so you more feel that than hear it i might get pain your ear um so these are the lads if you want to record document and all that stuff they'd be using these things for recording whales underwater and shit uh con condensers and for ch stuff in churches and so on because if you're using the dynamic microphone the thing has to be very loud so it has to be either in your face if you're singing it could be in the room but only really in the room if it is for example a drum kit or something loud and when I say in the room I mean like in the corner uh, at the end of a hall or something dynamics are they've, they're going to get a lot of <laughs> background noise with dynamics so you'll, you'd need to spend a lot of money on external preamps, which just means, do you know that little volume button I was talking about when you stick the little microphone cable into your sound card that we were talking about yesterday? It has a little volume knob on it. But as soon as you go above 8, you're just getting a lot of hiss and noise, and it's not really worth shit if you're a big snob. Um, so you'd need something to turn it up without introducing all that extra noise and that would be a, like a high-end microphone for you. And... Yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of ways around but... That's one way of doing it. Alright. So dynamics have to be very, very close to your mouth. You have the diaphragm. You're shaking that with the sound waves coming out of your voice. It goes into a positive and negative or whatever. goes into the transformer. And then, whoop, down the cable. Into your microphone preamp. Which is just a chip built into your sound card for most people. And you have a little trim button. And uh, it's, it, feckin', it flashes red if you're, if you're clipping it. Which means it's too loud. So often... You give them test, 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 and then it shines, uh, it goes up a bit red, and then you back it down a little bit, stop it going red. It only go red for a second if you start screaming for a second or something. So that's like a line check. Do you ever hear that? You're in a venue and people go, hey, testing, one, two, three, okay, watch out, so test it. They're just checking the, the, the mics are loud enough. Most of the time, anyway. And. And so dynamic microphones are generally used for radio because the, the room wouldn't be treated to be a background noise computer humming and so on uh, for, for voiceovers in movies you generally use a condenser microphone 
definitely record it afterwards. Especially for the ads, you get this big, low, boomy, boomy voice. Um, so that comes from a condenser. You can also get an, uh, a massive improved bass response from a dynamic, that's called the proximity effect. And that is, uh, let's see, you kind of do it, so you'd be like, uh, hello, 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 well, that's not really it, <laughs> hello, 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 so, <laughs> sorry, what I'm trying to, what I was trying to do there was add lower emphasis in my voice, and that's what um, these dynamics do, so it's also known as the presenter voice, you've got the, the dynamic mic shoved right in front of the voice, and you get that thing where like, the whole, car speakers start woofing around um, that's put, the sound of that is a microphone being very very close to your mouth um, yeah there you are so as I keep saying condensers need to be more in more of a controlled situation generally The microphone preamp is from speaking to everyone I know of. You can generally use uh, uh, SM57. Is they just say SM57? You need a really good preamp, like the, no APR and Eve or something. Um, a lot of it's about the preamp and the tone and the way it brings it up because there's so much shit added in by the. Uh, um, the microphone pre just often just sounds a bit shit and tinny. Anyway, there you are. All right, pickup patterns. This is a bit of a head scratcher. Let's do a polarity and stuff. All right. So this is why, when if you hold a condenser microphone. You would um, uh, yeah. Okay. So cardio pattern is the typical pattern for dynamic microphones. You can also get bidirectional if it is a ribbon microphone which is kind of like a cousin of dynamic microphones on these ones um i guess they're good for interview situations they're known for being very true sounding so that people like them with the royers and oh shit i'm not supposed to be i'm not sure i haven't decided whether i'm mentioning i haven't talked to the sponsors yet and all that stuff so i'm not sure if i'm meant to be referencing microphone names and stuff anyway Royers. Oops. Oh, yeah. All right. Anyway, pe people like them, but they uh, they record in front of them and behind of them, behind them, and um, they often need a lot of EQ afterwards because they're so dull sounding. So the thing about Royers is that I've sorry, Not ribbon microphones. It's just a ribbon. And they can, they're very susceptible to breaking because of the noise pressure. So if you put them in a kick drum, they'll just go break. Or else uh, up to a, something with a lot of air pressure, like a bass, um, you know, bass drum or a bass cab. So you put them at an angle so that the, the sound can, has a way, a way of rolling off, like the air will just flow down with it or whatever as opposed to the sound pressure building up and the ribbon just breaking they're quite quite delicate so as I said they pick up in front of them and behind them they're also brilliant for hi-hats um, high-end guitar high-end clean guitars uh, hi-hats some people say they're brilliant for interviews I wouldn't be arsed uh, <laughs> just as a uh, as a production style, if you will, because you're picking up the the person on either side of the table, and not so much the the round round. So bidirectional. All right. So you got cardioid, which only picks up what's in front of it. 
Alright, so that's what's in all the all the handheld microphones. Got some lovely cardioid stuff. Cardioid is the most important microphone for pickup pattern. So the most important things you need to know are fucking pickup patterns. The only one you need to know is cardioid. So that just means it picks it up right in front of you. Alright. You point it and it picks up at whatever it's pointing at. Easy peasy. Other microphones pick up like only what's behind it and all the rest of it. <laughs> Alright, so cardioid, that's the important one. You got your cardioid. Wonderful. Cardioid is the most used pickup pattern because it's the most useful pickup pattern. It allows microphones to be cheaper as well because, for example, with condenser microphones, instead of having to have two diaphragms, you only have to have one. Um, it, it's it halves the fucking the price ish, more or less. So you can make the the microphone a lot cheaper if it only has to pick up from one side as opposed to both sides. Okay. Cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. So cuts down production cost. Uh, but the reason why it's so important, so useful is rare. Just like a camera. You know, you're pointing at the, the picture, oh, often you only, something only looks good at one certain angle. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you have something that picks up the photo from all fucking panorama, often behind you look, there's something messy in the background, you don't want anyone seeing that, and there's cooker, dinner's cooking in the background or something. Alright, so th with the cardio, it's so handy because it's just point and shoot. You're like, I just want to, someone's talking there, I want to put the microphone there, so it picks that up. Fantastic. Alright, now, car condensers are very, very great, they're, they're not as forgiving. They're, they're very good with acoustic guitars and stuff, because they're just great generally if you don't know what you're doing. Because you can put a condenser like two feet away from something. It's good for distance micing, you can put something like the, a foot away from your subject, or maybe even a foot and a half away, and it'll sound good. Whereas with, if you, often you don't have that choice with the dynamic, unless it's a loud sound source. So you have to get quite close to it. So it's good for distance micing, as I, as I keep saying. The thing with dynamic is, um, yeah, I guess you're just limited a bit because it has to be so, so close. I know it sounds like I'm kind of contradicting myself, but I'm just running through different situations when you would have to use different ones. But just roughly speaking, from the from the place you are right now, where you have no money, and you're just running off a cheap sound card. Um, I'm guessing you're not throwing like your life savings into this on the first day. Um, we'll get into more expensive gear soon and so on. You're mostly just dealing with 57s, SM57s, um, and a lot of a lot of big sound engineers will just say consistently throughout time SM57, and they put like a uh, like a little wind blocker on the top because they don't like the they like the SM58, but it's a bit too. The pickup pattern is slightly altered because it's of having the ring around the top. Um, and they like the more uh, low end response from the 57 something. It's subtle enough, like. But there you are. People absolutely can't get enough of that microphone. They love it. You'll see it everywhere. Whereas with the condensers that everyone loves, there's a lot of debate and a lot of it has to do with classic pairing between the microphone and then the preamp and then pairing that with another piece of gear and so on. It's called the signal chain. The signal chain. So with the a lot of the early uh, microphones, 
the where the condensers were omnidirectional. This means that it picks up everything, everything around it. And still a lot of high like cl classical lads and stuff love condensers because it gives a true response. Sorry, Ed, uh, if you can, try to use a condenser on Omni, I guess. If you have the luxury of having an environment where it, it gives it much true responses, as opposed to just picking up one angle, it picks up all the different things in the room and all the reflections and so on. But uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's rarely used, like 80 or 90% of the time. Anyone has these microphones, but it's called selectable pickup pattern, and it'll have a different option. It'll have do you want cardioid or omni, and if you're really lucky, it'll have another button called bidirectional, which is front and back. And then if if it's really expensive one, then we have everything in between, which is not not really bothersome. So sure, there you are. So when in doubt, cardioid. It's a lot cheaper, and all the rest of it. The great thing with condensers is the, the diaphragms have been uh, copied so well by the Chinese imitation manufacturers or something like that. So... Just the microphones, you've, you've, uh, stuff's a lot more affordable right now. Cheap condensers I generally spend my money on dynamics because cheap condensers just sound cheap. They just sound real tinny a lot of the time. Like you can get lucky with some of them. Um, it's often a case of balance. So I, I did, if you think about it like this, a dynamic sounds dark and a condenser sounds bright. So what I like to do is, if it's say, um, it's all about balance. So if you're recording something and it sounds very bright, uh, you might use uh, a dark mic on it to make it to make a balance. For example, hi hats and an SM7B. So to tame the really high end, you might use because if you you use a dark microphone, so dark it sounds a bit muffled, and that's because the mic the diaphragm isn't moving as fast, it doesn't have that little power, that little power voltage. Um, in case there's any confusion about phantom power, there's a button on the preamp that says 48V plus 48. And you press that and it turns on. If you've been modifying your equipment, it could, particularly, it can break some microphones or so and break, turn on and off the phantom power. So, uh, I'd say you'd be grand, to be honest. I, do, I doubt you're, you have microphones that cost a grand and all that. Just um, on your first day, maybe you do, fair play, but uh, dynamics, definitely dynamics, um, the 58 and 57 have been on every recording that you've heard, probably, one or the other, um, so yeah, they're good. They're good. Yeah. There's a, a lot of varieties of microphones. There's me myself. I'm very specific about which microphones I use and won't use. I know exactly like by you. Oh, it's the situation. I use this microphone. It's this one. I'll use that one. And sometimes you end up using two different microphones and blending them. So there is there's a set list 
and it takes a long time for let like, yours develop on using what microphones for what job. But when you're starting out, you're probably just gonna have one microphone. And let it be a 57. Uh, you can get about two fifty eights, I guess. They won't break. Um, so yeah, L lots of people love them because they're on uh, most used vocal microphone, and then most used guitar microphone of all time. Most used for snare drums. Uh, kind of toms, toms and. Presidential speeches, brass in budget situations. Yeah, they're good if you want to hear something. If you want something in the background, they're very mid forward, so you're gonna have too much shit going on in your mid range, and then it's just gonna be a ball ache to mix. But that's a great way of using different microphones because it's like painting. Do you want some? Do you want this painted really bright, or do you want this painted kind of dark? I'm talking about light here, sound, sound wise. All right. So if you're like, right, this person is really bright, <laughs> voice, you might want to just stick a dynamic on that. And if they're really, really dull voice, a male. Uh, hey, my name is Boris. I am from Wuja. Hopefully that's not racist. You'd stick a condenser on that man because. It'd be amazing hearing all those fucking low rumbles, getting all that low shit. He doesn't have too much high shit going on, so it's going to boost. I remember I said the mic condensers are very tinny, so it's going to boost all that tin tinniness and so on. But if you had that same microphone and a high singing girl, it'd be so much tinniness on a high frequency element with more boost and EQ and the tinniness. And it's a mess, it's a mess. Um, so there you are. Um, personally, microphones are one of my favorite things in the world, so I know that's that's it's very sad, isn't it? but uh, they're very good. They're very good, and typically, why people have so many microphones is because they say fix it at source in the recording thing. So you fix the singer or whatever. If they they have to be sounding good, right? They're sounding good, and they're like, no, nah, still sounds like shite. The next thing you check is the microphone. And often, as I said, you just use a dark one or a bright one, dynamic or condenser. If it's loud, you generally put a dynamic on it just so the condenser won't break. Uh, for example, in Abbey Road, you weren't allowed to use a, a condenser microphone on a bass drum because it would break. So. That's before the Beatles popped in. But yeah. So there are just some hard and fast rules. Omni directional means it picks up everywhere. Cardioid only in front of itself. By just means front and back. Uh, that'll that'll get you through life. They are, they are called polar patterns, and often there will be a a switch on the side of the microphone, and not often. But if it's gonna do it, it'll probably have a switch on it, and you just fucking switch it. It's a, it's a very so tiny switch. You need like a pleck to switch it sometimes. Um, generally, to save costs and all that stuff, just get cardioids, because um, often like they can be double the price just for for being omnidirectional, um, and just from everyone I've ever talked to, they're like, yeah, I, I got the Omni and it's, it's fantastic, but I only use it like the odd time. So what myself and lots of other people do is they buy two of the cardioids microphones for the price of one of the Omni models. So that way uh, you can make the stereo image anyway, any way you like and so on. It's just... Just down to preference, like if you have if you have a load of money, just buy two omnis and that's that's brilliant. Then you have even more options. But so there you are, listen, that's it. Stay safe, stay focused, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Every single episode of Vegan Steven Music 
is available on and the Vegan Stephen podcast, the streaming. So wherever you get podcasts, it's all there in audio form for you, okay? And the video form is all in Vegan Stephen music on YouTube. Every single episode ever is available, both in audio form and video form. Hope you enjoy and all the rest of it. Check out Facebook, Instagram, all the stuff, Vegan Stephen. All the best. <laughs>